Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have another interesting Leela game to share with you on the White and Leela Night Odds. No King Knight for this game. Playing against Grandmaster Joel Benjamin. This is game five from their eight game match. Time controls, 60 minutes apiece, 30 second increment throughout. So I'll be focused primarily on the end game in this one. We see a, a minor piece imbalance end game. Uh, instructive. We're going to see exactly where Grandmaster gets it wrong in this case. We start out with a Scandinavian defense and an early check, early castles, and the rook quickly getting to the half open file. Timely, in a way. Uh, this square has now been opened up so that once the bishop is questioned, it can fly all the way back home. Frequently, I frequently see this with the Lila games, the bishops working from afar, uh, staying out of reach of the pesky knights, ducking uh, uh, early simplifications. Okay, we play with the pawns from here, robbing uh, the pieces of the d5 square. We got a duo. And another thing that frequently pops up in these Lila games is a difference between uh, the queens. So first of all, we get this pawn duo challenged. Mission accomplished by black. It's been broken up. We are 12 moves in. Big difference between the queens. Very active white queen. Black queen still on home base. And white is already maybe ready to connect with this dark square bishop. Might bishop h6 be right around the corner? Now white has a lead in development. Uh, why is this the case? Well, in part... Because white has one last piece. <laughs> Playing down the piece, you have a lead in development. That's a benefit. All right, what I'm getting at, right around the corner, uh, we're going to see this last piece enter the scene. White's going to be, uh, in short order, fully mobilized. We see the pin. Black's approach from here is with bishop d4. So that's uh, a risky approach. Uh we're going to see that the bishop ends up in a pin. How the computer wants to play it here, Stockfish has its eye on knight here. Connecting knights, holding on to the king side. And next up, it wants to meet this move with queen c7. I'm just giving you a little taste of what the computer has its eye on from here. Joel's approach, bishop d4, bishop's in a pin. And after this e5, Leela is able to break away. Uh, break down, I should say, uh, this pinned bishop, swipes on e5. Bishop takes rook, queen takes bishop. For the moment, Joel is up a full rook, rook versus pawn imbalance, but there's a big problem. Problem here, problem here, and problem here. The only move here, the top move, move played in the game, is bishop d7. And this allows the following. Bishop takes knight. We get the queens off. Damage king side in the end. And a white rook that is now active on the seventh rank. The knight is defended. And now we have this cute move. The rook comes all the way back in order to meet rook f to d8 with rook c2. Duck and cover mode. Not so quick to exchange rooks. Now, the evaluation around here is approaching minus two. So, I mean, was this a good strategy to get to this point where the queens are off? Yes, you have a damaged king side. Leela does have a pawn for the exchange, but it has simplified quite a bit. Interesting approach. Uh, the follow-up from here, uh, the knight repositions to c5. It's not really a fan of that approach. What it has its eye on here is the following. Rook d4, and next double up the rooks. Shooting next for rook d2. Now, I'm not sure what the approach would be by Leela uh, once a rook is on the second rank. Um, it would make sense to go for a line like this because it's clear Leela doesn't want to exchange rooks. Voluntar voluntarily retreating like this and then hiding on c2. So not sure what Leela would be coming up with if you 
if Black went for this plan, a different plan on board in this one, and that is to reposition the knight to the c5 square. Leela cuts out the b4 jump, uh, also paves the way to start expanding, uh, advancing the majority of pawns. Knight d5 is not available. There's rook takes knight, pin on the c file. So b4 is cut out. Computer wants to return at this stage, but Joel uh, swings the back completely around. This was his idea to drop into c5. This gives Leela a window to now pivot on d5. No rook takes knight here. There's no pin on the c file in this case, and the knight, uh, this last move, packs a punch. Threatening a fork of uh, these two here, and we're also on the pawn. So king g7 defends both. b4, knight e4, and bishop to d3. Now, what do you think the evaluation is of this position? So what, what number would you assign to this position? If you'd like to go ahead, pause the video, see what you would come up with. All right. The computer is saying around minus 0.6. And I believe if Joel was asked what he thought uh, the computer assessment was of this, I, I wouldn't be surprised to learn he thought it was somewhere between minus 0.5 and minus 1. Uh, I'm pretty sure he assessed this position in short as no longer winning for black. So if it's not going to be winning for black, um, you know, with that, with that in mind, his approach here was to give back some material. He takes the knight here, gives back the exchange, and puts all his chips in on this minor piece imbalance ending that he thinks he can hold. But he's, uh, he was incorrect in thinking that that is holdable. We're going to see exactly how Lila is able to break things down once Joel goes in for this uh, exchange sacrifice. Uh, the top move here uh, is considered knight c3, kind of fancy. There you take with the knight. that will be winning after rook takes bishop. And if rook takes knight, there's rook takes knight. Now there is uh, this pin here on protected rook. Again, we're looking at minus 0.6 territory. Not winning. Okay. Joel's approach. Let me just go ahead and simplify the position and give some material back. And I'm going to put all my chips again in on holding this ending. So this is what I'd like to now focus on, this ending right here, knight versus bishop. Leela is up a pawn, but it is blockaded. And Joel has this idea to kind of control all of these fifth rank squares. At any point, b6 is there, and there you go. These two are under control. How exactly to break down this position? How to make inroads with the king? Joel's approach from here is to pretty much sit. He puts this pawn on h6, keeps the king around on the king side, doesn't move with the knight, and uh, it's going to be broken down eventually. Leela's going to demonstrate how that will be broken down when you try a sit and wait approach. Now what I'd like to point out is that if this structure was healthier, uh, if this pawn was over here on g6, black would be able to hold it. Uh, the approach would be to actually have the king be the blockader and reposition the knight uh, to f6 in some cases. It's holdable if the pawns are healthier. Uh, if this approach is taken with the de a deficient kingside structure, with this fractured kingside, there's a downside in that the king can approach this half-dead pawn, put pressure on the isolated h-pawn. That's uh, a direction white can go. So Joel's approach from here is with h6, and he keeps these pawns here. Eventually he'll play b6 to cut out a king c5 move. But this is going to be the pawn placement eventually for black. He's going to sit with that. What other approach could black take if he's not going to sit and wait? So I tested something out. I wondered what would happen if black expanded. 
with f5 and then look to approach like this. I want to at least give you a taste for how white can approach this situation. You could improve the king, you could cut out the black king from even stepping foot here, and the approach is pretty much to go all the way over here to the one square that is not easily under control by a black pawn or knight. The knight has these two, the black pawns control these at some point or another. This is really the vulnerable fifth rank square that white should be approaching. Uh, a downside I should note in playing this way with f5 expanding is that there's an additional, there would be an additional restriction placed on a black piece. A knight or king must now have this responsibility to defend the f5 pawn. Also, black would have to be delicate where exactly, you know, you go with that king. Currently, there's a pin and g4 is potentially there. Uh, g4 taking advantage of that pinned pawn is right around the corner. So let's say the king gets out of that. Uh, king steps up, there's a check. Okay, in the end, the king occupies this square. Now, what can black do in this situation? If you move, you can't continually move the king defending the pawn without ending up in a pin. If ever king h7, there you go, g4 is there. What else does black have? Eventually you're going to run out of moves. Where do you go with this knight? If this knight goes here thinking, oh, I'm going to track down, I'll give up the f pawn and take your a pawn in return, hang on, quick little note here. Uh, if your knight is ever on the edge on a dark square, when your opponent has a light square bishop, you run the risk of a move like this. Your knight is toast. All right, this would be a winning position. There are still ways to free the knight, but the general idea, you run uh, the risk of being stuck on the edge like this. My point, black's going to be running out of moves in a situation like this. King on h5, can't continually move the king and defend the pawn. The only knight move that uh, black has here that won't give up the pawn immediately is knight to e4. But in this situation, you could simplify into a one king and pawn ending. And how would this look? Something like this, where the king gets all the way over here just in the nick of time to defend d5. And then there is this plan to baby step it, getting in a g4 break. Uh, h3 is not winning because of h4. But first, g3 and next up, there we go. h3 g4 and we are doing what successfully undermining black's connected past e4 pawn this is a one king and pawn ending so this is a, an approach that white could take in short going all the way back here this is an approach that white could take if black plays the pawns in a different way goes with f5 tries to improve like this we have a way forward and that is to approach that weakened 5th rank square, h5. How does Leela break it down in this game? Let's see it in action. Improving the king, the bishop, the king gets to d4, c5 square is cut out, and now watch the pawn play on the king side. We get this h pawn in particular all the way up to h5. Now once this scenario and once this setup is in place, what's nearby for white? A past h-pawn. You cannot prevent a past h-pawn now. Eventually there will be a g5 break, and one way or another, this h-pawn will become past. Very valuable outside past pawn. A knight's nightmare. What's black's try from here? He goes with king to f8. We get h4, or excuse me, a4 from here. King g7 is played in this position, and the follow-up is g5. If the king goes first to g8, we would still go with g5. And if the king steps up here to g7, white could keep the king right where he's at, the bishop right where he's at, and expend a move with b5. And we will have a similar situation to the game. All right, in this one, 
we don't see king to g8, it's king g7, and now g5 is on board. What is black supposed to do here? What are the options? In the game, knight e8 is played. If you take on g5, we simply recapture. We have this h6 move nearby. What is black supposed to do here? Let's say capture on g5. Ah, e5 is no longer defended. The king enters. The blockade, uh, this d6 blockade is broken down. The knight moves. Many ways to follow up. This is super appealing. Uh, bishop can defend the pawn. It's also controlling both of black's past pawns. A winning position here. You push the pawn, you enter over here on the queen side. So that's not going to work out if black tries taking towards the center here. What about taking away from the center? Now this could actually be a little bit tricky. In this scenario, you don't recapture. King e5 would be the winning way right away, uh, hitting the knight. If you recapture here, it says after f6, this is holding for black. Maintains control over that e5 square. All right. The winning way would be with e, uh, king e5 here, and then we're getting to the same position here by transposition. So what other option does black have here besides the move in the game after e5? Uh, what other option does he have besides knight e8? Well, let's look at it. It has to be a, a king move. The queenside pawn advances are of no help. Let's say the king moves to g8. In this case, we take on h6. And this is a bit of a funny line here. Situation like this, now the king doesn't even have a move. <laughs> you can move the bishop, and now the knight pretty much has to move. This guy moves, we enter. The knight moves in this case. There we go. We push this pawn, give that pawn up, just so we're granted access to d5. And once we're on d5, there's no controlling the king. It will be able to approach the queenside pawns, and it will be winning. So however you slice it here, playing as black, white will be able to make progress after this g5 advance. Very instructive play here with this uh, arrangement of pawns against this deficient uh, kingside structure for black. g5, the winning way. Knight e8 in this game. We pitch the pawn, and now we're entering here. This is completely winning. Take on h6, approach the queenside pawns, and this one doesn't go too much further. We exchange a and b pawn, and right around here it starts to be crystal clear that there is now no piece that will stop this past pawn. It's at this point that Joel resigns. So, impressive game here, I gotta say. Classical format, Leela without a knight, still finding a way to win. Blockades will be broken. You humans, I sometimes wonder how you've made it this far.